Welcome to Butler High School's Tech Talk Thursday. Due to inclement weather conditions, this will be a video podcast. However, there will be a face-to-face -face on the same topic on Thursday, February 26th. This is on Google Apps Extensions and Add-ons. There's actually going to be three short videos on each, uh, not, each of them not lasting more than 15 minutes. So the purpose of these three things is to extend or add to Google Chrome and the things that we use in Google. If you end up with students that have Chromebooks, these are extremely important because the Chromebooks only have Google Chrome installed on them. So you're going to need to come up with ways that students could therefore use their web browser to extend their research and use it more like a traditional computer. So we're going to be exploring these today. All the materials that you need are going to be found in the Google Classroom. So for our assignment uh, this week, we're going to be looking at what is an app, an add-on, and an extension. We're, we have a document, a shared document for our whole school that we'll be adding to. I'm going to ask you to be looking in the Chrome store, finding an app add-on or extension that actually helps you in your classroom or in your curriculum, and adding to our list so that we have a comprehensive list for our school. In addition, we'll have a North Carolina Digital uh, Leaders Coaches Network uh, survey that will take five to ten minutes that we'll need you to have to complete. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because if our students end up with Chromebooks next year or in the future, we need to have um, a, a set of resources ready for us to use that will help these students in the future. Plus, it's going to help us as well. So in this video, we're going to explore add-ons. I mean, excuse me, apps. So an app is <clears throat> an, a, a self-contained program that's specialized software built to fulfill a particular purpose or an application. Users download them on any of their mobile devices, and we do that on our Revolves in the Microsoft Store, on our phones through our iStore or Google Play. We use these all the time. Uh, examples of these could be Google Drive, uh, Google Classroom, um, Google Docs, anything that we're adding to already. And in that case, most of these apps are simply websites that students normally write the address down and navigate to uh, traditionally on a computer, but the apps will allow the students to click on them very quickly and link to them. So if you have more than one browser open in Google Chrome, there's an app link. It's the far left link in your menu bar. And if you click it, you'll see um, re apps that CMS already has. Obviously, I have more because I've been adding them as I go. And you can add them as well. The link was on that page in the Google Play Store. I'll go right back and show you one more time. There's a, a link for, not excuse me, Google Play, Google Chrome Store. Um, and if you go there, you can explore all the apps. Now, right now, only teacher logins have the ability to do this. Um, student logins are still tied to that Gaggle account, so it will not work. Next year, students will have a Google account, and it will work. We're also going to have an app administrator, which will control what apps are open and closed for students. Again, this is going to help us with our master list, because if as a school we create a master list of apps that we want students to use, then next year as the Apple, excuse me, as the Google administrator, I already have a list of apps that we can open up for students to download onto their devices or personalize on their logins. So uh, again, like I said, some of the apps, Google Drive, Google Docs, again, we can go right to that website. Google Classroom is another one. Um, and again, I have like two pages of them. They kind of run off the screen. But there's a lot. Socrative is one that a lot of you use, EasyBib. Uh, Google Keeps pretty neat. So I'm going to show you one or two real quickly so you can experience them. Um, one I think that all of you could use is the Pixlr editor. So I'm going to actually just type in the website so you can see what the web based version looks like and then I'll show you the app based version or you can go to the app based version yourself later on it is in our list so Pixlr P -I -X -L -R .com, is a photo editor site there are lots of these this also works on any type of mobile device so I love it for my phone and what it will allow you to do is to manipulate any photo that you take so how many times have we taken a photo and we look at it and it is not quite up to par to either put in our wiki or Weebly, the yearbook, a project, whatever it may be. This allows students and users to adjust and edit those pictures to make that happen. So you can either create your own image, get one from a computer, a URL, or a library, or a mobile device. I'm just going to click the computer, grab one of the images off my, off my screen, and then you see it. 
In the left hand side, and again I'm just working right out of the browser, are tools. I can crop, I can edit, I can move this picture, I can add color schemes, I can add word art, I can add drops. If I had red eye, I could take red eye out. So there's a lot of really great tools that I can use. This also works on layers. So if you're doing a, a more advanced picture and you want to put more layers in or a mosaic where you want to smash a bunch of pictures together and create your own collage, this will work. The two things I think will be most helpful to all of us. One, under image. There's an adjust image size or rotate the image if it comes on the wrong size. So whenever you put a picture in a website, a good rule of thumb is that a picture should be no more than a third of the size of the web page. So that's 300 by 300 pixels, roughly. Now this image, if you look at the size, is about the correct proportion, so I might not want to change it. But if I needed to change it because it was way too large, I could do that right here and it would obviously adjust that for me and then I just save the picture again. I use this a lot when I'm doing web pages. I also use this a lot if I'm doing uh, web pages and I want to make sure that all my pictures are the same size. It's kind of just a preference. Okay. The other thing I really like is the adjustment option. I can adjust auto levels, so that will automatically adjust my picture. It happens a lot in the media center. Um, the the lighting is so dark, it just is hard to see. I can adjust brightness and contrast, hue and saturation, color balance, and so by doing that I can actually improve my picture if I need to. Once I finish, I can just simply save it and then I have my new image the way I want it. So this is Pixlr. It's something that all of us can use. So if you choose a Google app, you would simply uh, research it and try it out for a day or two um, from the Google Chrome store. And then if you like it, follow my example on our page. Okay, I put a few up there already. Mind Maps, Pixlr, Video Converters, um, and then also Splash Top, which a lot of schools have found um, success with. And this is where you can actually turn your Revolve into your remote for your uh, computer. So you can use your Revolve as your presentation tool and it would control your desktop computer which is hooked up to your projection screen and allow you to move around the room some more. If you're interested in that, let me know and I will get that um, installed on your machine, but all other uh, apps and extensions will work on their own. Um, so that is it for our apps. The next video will be on extensions which happen to be my favorite. In Google.